If you need to pass GED math, you should know that scientific notation questions are fair game and do show up on the GED math test. So in this question, I'm gonna break down a bunch of different examples of scientific notation and we'll walk through them together here. And hopefully you'll take away some practical strategies you can use to get more questions right on GED math so you can move ahead faster and get GED math behind you. So I think one of the best places to start is to just jump in with an example. So I have on the screen here, please write the number in scientific notation. And we have the number right here. So if you'd like to, now's your chance to pause the video and try to figure this out. And if you have no idea how to do it or if you get stuck, don't worry because we're just practicing for right now. Okay, so let's talk about this. So basically, whenever you have an example like this, we always want to put the decimal point between the first and second number. And right now, my decimal point is right here after the last zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this decimal point and I'm gonna just move it over to the left until I get it between the one and the five. And I'm gonna count up how many moves it takes to do that. So I'll go one, two, three, four. And so if I write this then in scientific notation, I just write 1.5 times 10 to the four. So this would be the correct answer here. Okay, so here's another example. And if you'd like to try this, then you can pause the video right now and I'll give you a chance to try it and just unpause the video when you're ready and we'll go over the answer. Okay, so let's talk about this question. So I'm gonna approach this the same way. And I wanna keep in mind that I wanna end up with my decimal point between the first two digits. So between the three and the four. Now, right now my decimal point is right here after this last zero. So I'm gonna take this decimal and I'm gonna move it to the left until I get it between the three and the four. And I'm gonna count up how many moves that takes. So one, two, three, four, five. So in scientific notation, I'm gonna write 3.4 times 10 to the fifth. So this time the example is 22,400. So as always, I'll give you a chance to pause the video, try to figure this out. And whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so in this case, again, we want to end up with the decimal between the first and second digits. So we want the decimal between the twos. And right now my decimal's over here after the last zero. So I'm gonna move it and count how many moves it takes. One, two, three, four. So I do 2.2. And this time I also want to include the four. And it's times 10 to the fourth. So a little bit different this time. So on the screen is your next example. And if you'd like to, you can pause the video and try to figure this out. And then whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so I'm going to use the same strategy here. Again, I want to end up with my decimal point between the fours here. And right now my decimal point is at the end of the number. So I'm going to move it to the left and count up the moves. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so I want to write 4.4, bring that three along for the ride, times 10 to the seven. So here we have 5.2 times 10 to the sixth, and this is written in scientific notation. This time we're gonna practice going from scientific notation to standard form. So let me give you a chance to try this out. Write 5.2 times 10 to the sixth in standard form. And if you get stuck or have no idea how to do it, don't worry because we're just gonna go over it. It doesn't matter if you get it right or wrong for right now, we're just practicing. So I'll give you a chance to try that now if you'd like to. Okay, so basically, you can kind of, one way to think about this would be to just kind of work backwards from the way that we were just doing in the previous question. So you could start by writing just 552 here. And so we know that the decimal is going to start between the five and the two. And you can just kind of think about moving it six places to the right, and then you can add the zeros in. So let me show you what I mean. So I would go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then you can go back and put the zeros in just like this. And that's one way to get the right answer. 
So maybe thinking about it this way might help if you're just uh, practicing or just learning for the first time. Another trick though that I can teach you is that if you've got something like this, five times 10 to the sixth, start by writing 52, and then whatever this number here is, in this case it's six, you want to subtract by one, and that's how many zeros you're gonna add. Now that might sound really confusing, so let me show you what I mean. So we've got a six up here. So when I write my number in standard form, I just put five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and if, I know that's a lot that I'm throwing at you pretty fast here, so let me, uh, we'll go over some more examples and hopefully that'll make this make more sense. So here's another example, 2.3 times 10 to the fourth power. So let me give you a chance to pause the video if you'd like to, try this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically there are two different ways to think about this here, and the first is to just start by writing the two and the three, and just think, if over here I've got 2.3, that means I want to take the decimal and move it four places to the right. So if I count, it would be one, two, three, four. And then I want to go back and just fill my zeros in like this. That's a perfectly valid way to do these questions. Uh, the other way to do it would be to just start by writing the two and the three and saying, hey, this is 10 to the fourth. Three is one number fewer than four, and I want to put in three zeros right here. So now we have 1.23 times 10 to the fifth. And as always, I'm going to give you a chance to pause the video and try this out. And whenever you're done, we'll go over it. So again, let me show you the first way to think about this first. So let's start with one, two, three. And we know that the decimal started between the one and the two here. And I want to go five places to the right. So I would go one two, three, four, five. And if I fill in my zeros, we see that 123,000 would be the correct answer. Now, if you do it the other way, there's a little twist here because in this time, this time there are two different digits to the right of this decimal point. So what I do is I write one, two, three. And since there's two digits to the right of my decimal, I wanna do five minus two. 5 minus 2 is 3, so I put three zeros here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now we're going to look at a little different type of example here. This case has 0 0.0082 as your question, uh, so you can try to write this in scientific notation if you'd like to. You can pause the video and try it, and if you get stuck, don't worry because we're just going to go over the answer. Okay, so basically, to do a question like this, we want to start with the decimal here, and we want to move it so it ends up between the last two numbers here, the 8 and the 2. So that would be 1, 2, 3 different moves. Okay, so if I rewrite this, I would have 8.2 times 10. And this time, it's not 10 to the 3. It's going to be 10 to the negative 3. I'm excited to announce that this video's champion shoutout goes to a test taker who says, I am 66 years old and just passed the math section of the GED test on the first try and says the math section was the last section I needed to obtain my GED and I was dreading it and scared of failing. And the test taker goes on to say that I started and passed all tests in just nine days. So I want to wish this person congratulations. Nine days is amazing. Nine days is very fast. It usually takes people several months or so to pass. Nine days is not typical. Okay, so here's your next example. It's 0 0.00072. So now's your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so in this case here, we want to take our decimal, and this time we're going to move it so it ends up between the seven and the two. And let's count that up, how many moves that is. It's one, two, three, four. So I want to rewrite this. I want to write 7.2 times 10 to the negative four. So now let's go the other way. So we have 4.3 times 10 to the negative five. So now's your chance to pause the video. Try to write this in standard form. And if you get stuck, as I've said throughout the video, don't worry about it, we're just practicing. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try that if you wanted to. Basically, in a case like this, let me start by writing it out. So I'll start with my four and my three. Okay, and so the negative here, since it's 10 to the negative five, the negative tells me that I'm gonna take my decimal and I'm gonna move it to the left now. 
Okay, so I want to move it to the left five places. All right, so I would go one, two, three, four, five, and my decimal is going to end up right here. So I'm going to put my zeros in now. So the answer would be 0 0.000043. Now let's think about it if we want to kind of do the faster way. So in this case, I'm going to start by writing my four and my three. I've got a negative up here, so that tells me that the decimal is going to be going to the left. Okay, that's very important. So I come up here, I think about the five, then I do five minus one, which is four. So I'm going to put in four zeros. And then I put my decimal here. Okay, so either method here, we're going to get the same answer. Okay, so the next example is 1.23 times 10 to the negative 6. So let me give you a chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so let's start by writing it out. And whenever you have an example with a negative number in scientific notation, uh, you can never go wrong by just writing it out here, as long as you remember that you want to put your zeros going to the left. All right, that's an easy mistake to make. So in this case, my decimal started between the 1 and the 2. And I want to move it to the left six places. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So right here is where I'd put my decimal. And this would be the correct answer. So if we go to do this the, the faster way, um, and that you would think that since if this was a positive six, you would consider the fact there are two different digits here and you do six minus two. That's kind of how you would do it for a positive to figure out how many zeros there would be for a negative. Okay, in this case right here, we don't want to do that. We just want to do six minus one, which is five. And that tells us that there's going to be five zeros. All right, so it's a little bit different uh, than working with positives if you want to kind of do it the faster way. So it's up to you to decide which method you want to use here. But notice that in both cases here, we have five zeros in our answer choice. All right, so it can be a little confusing. Uh, when in doubt, just take the time and draw it out here. It might take you longer, but hopefully that is pretty straightforward of a method to get you the right answer. So you have to decide what's going to work for you on your test.